Hi class, welcome to week five. We are going over Abraham Maslow today and Carl Rogers, which both of these clinicians um, really focused on person-centered therapy and we're the forefathers of that. Um, you've heard of things possibly as Rogerian therapy. You can watch him um, do therapy in old videos if you're looking into um, going into the field of psychology. Anyhow, um, we will be covering them today. Just a few reminders on our discussion boards. I know I gave you week four off, so as we're looking at week five, um, I'm just noticing our threads to respond to other people's um, threads are getting shorter and shorter. So just be mindful of your response and, and making sure it's a thought out response. Um, because again, like I said, I've noticed that you're getting shorter. I know you guys are putting in a lot of hard work. There's been quite a few papers and this is very fast paced. So I appreciate it. So I just want you to be mindful of that. Um, so anyways, we're going to look at the hierarchy of needs. Maslow was born in 1908 and passed away in 1970. He was born in Brooklyn. Um, he felt issues of inferiority and unaffectionate and rejecting from his mother and hostility towards his father. So again, this is shaping some of his thought process. Um, he tended to compensate for his feelings of inferiority and devoted to developing a psychology toward highest human ideals. So he developed the hierarchy of needs, which you may have heard of this before. Um, and again, it's from the strongest to the weakest. So um, kind of all that, that thought process of survival of the fittest. Um, and the, these needs determine how someone behaves and the choices that they make. Um, so characteristics. One, needs, one need dominates at a time. So meaning whatever the need is, it, it, it's what takes precedence. Um, needs not fully satisfied before next need becomes important. So if things aren't being met, they're constantly like building up or adding up. Um, so deficient needs are lower needs, growth um, are higher needs and appear later in life. So this itself is the hierarchy. So self-actualization is what we're striving for based on his theory. And then it goes esteem needs, belonging and love needs, safety needs and psychological needs. So as you can see, some of these things are more basic and then they're building up to um, more in-depth things, okay? So basic psychological needs are food, water, and sex, and your basic survival, again, based on what he believes. Rarely a concern for the middle-class American, but more of a concern for people that are suffering in poverty. As you can see, someone maybe in a poverty situation wouldn't have the ability to get basic needs met. Safety needs, security, order, and stability, right? Um, important drives for infants and neurotic adults, preference for structure or routine, avoidance to new experiences, right? We like what's comfortable, we like what's stable, things of that nature. Belongingness and love needs, need to give and receive love, expressed through lover or mate, and social relationships and groups. Difficulty, difficult to satisfy in a mobile society. So again, if you're on the go all the time, um, you might not be able to sustain a loving relationship, according to Maslow. And failure to meet this need is a fundamental cause of emotional maladjustment. So if we aren't feeling loved or not giving love, we might have a hard time um, in society um, and personally um, within ourselves. Esteem needs, so self-worth, esteem from ourselves, status and recognition from others, and failure to satisfy leads to inferiority feelings and helplessness, which this was something that he himself struggled with, was feeling inferior to others. Self-actualization needs, so again, the top, is the, top, the top of the pyramid, the fullest development of the self. And, and again, in some theories, when we're looking at family therapy or individual therapy, this is what... Um, the theorist is striving for is self-actualization. So freedom from social or societal or self-constraints, no distraction by the lower needs, so meaning all those other needs are met, secure in self-image and self-relationships and realistic knowledge of self. Um, so again, a lot of self-awareness, right? Cognitive needs, need to know and to understand, second set of innate needs and appears in late infancy and early childhood necessary for self-actualization. So those needs have to be met in order to get to self-actualization. 
And then uh, meta motivation, motivation of self actualizers and maximizing personal potential and enriching one's life. So again, that's, again, we're, the aim is to get to self actualization um, and to your personal potential. If we look at this slide, it talks about the characteristics of self-actualization, actualizers, clear perceptions, acceptance of self, others, and nature, um, dedication to a cause, independence and need for privacy, freshness of appreciation, peak experiences, social interests, deep interpersonal relationships, creativeness, creativeness and originality, resistance to social pressures. So meaning like this person has truly arrived and is not influenced by outside forces, which there may be some of us that feel, yeah, I feel totally self-actualized. And, and you know, maybe for others, you feel like I have moments of self-actualization, not all the time. Again, this is just one person's perspective. I'm not saying it's truth or that this is how it actually is. Some of you may agree more than others, um, but this was his thought process. Questions about human nature. So again, the same as others, free will, nature, nurture, past, present, focus, uniqueness, emphasize, growth process, and optimism. Um, self-determination theory, a contemporary outgrowth of self-actualization theory facilitated by intrinsic motivation, three basic needs, competence, autonomy, and relatedness, and a satisfaction of these needs positively correlated with self-actualization. Reflection. So he con contributed to humanistic psychology, which we're going to look at even more with Carl Rogers, um, influenced positive psychology movement and a broad impact of Maslow's theory. And these were some of his criticisms. So research criticisms, methods lacked rigor, too inconsistent and vague, there wasn't enough specifics, and use of terms inconsistent and ambiguous, lacking in negative, um, everything was very positive, but that was a lot of their theory, it was positive psychology. Um, so we're gonna continue on to Carl Rogers, which again, he is one of the forefronts of, um, Rogerian therapy, right? Carl Rogers, Rogerian therapy. Um, he too believed in positive psychology. Um, he was born in the suburb of Chicago in 1987 is when he passed away. And there are these famous videos of him doing therapy. And he was very much the kind of therapist who humanistic psychology, they don't talk a lot. So the, the client talks and they sit there and they give empathetic regard. They um, nod their head, they're very understanding. There's not a lot of feedback. So when you see the image of maybe a person on a couch and a, a clinician sitting behind them, that's a bit of an example of Rogerian therapy. We think of that too as psychoanalytic theory. Um, but anyways, that's Carl Rogers. He's the father of, of that. Um, he came from a strict religious background. Um, he had a rural life and fascination with science. He studied ministry, then child study for underprivileged children. A unique approach to counseling worked to bring clinical psychology to the mainstream. And he had a very distinguished career, which is very true. The self and tendency toward actualization. So he too believed in self-actualization. And the basic human motivation to actualize, maintain, and enhance the self process involves difficult growth. Um, organisms valuing, pro valuing process, process of judging based on value for actualization and growth. Phenomenology, um, only reliable reality is subjective experience and inner perception of reality. So basically what we, how we interpret something is basically what's true to us. Our experience becomes the only basis for our judgments and behaviors, which some of you may very agree that that's very true. Um, whether it's accurate or not, it's based on our own experience. Self and childhood, positive regard, acceptance, love, and approval from others, universal and persistent need. This is a need. Self and childhood continued, unconditional positive regard, approval regardless of one's behavior, positive regard of self, condition under which we grant ourselves acceptance and approval. Self and childhood continued, conditions of worth, believe that we are only worth worthy of approval for desirable behaviors and attitudes, conditional positive regard. Approval and acceptance granted only when a person exhibits desirable behaviors. You could see how some of this could be problematic. If there's incongruencies, discrepancies between self-concept and experience, incongruent experience becomes threatening, psychological adjustment is compatible between self and concept experiences. 
characteristics of fully functioning persons. Fully functioning persons are self-actualized, developing all facts of the self, desire result of psychological development. Everything's come together. Um, characteristics, aware of all experience, live richly and fully in every moment, which... I mean, I consider myself a pretty put together person. But I don't know if I live richly and fully in every moment, but you know, that's just me. Trust in your own organism. Feel free to make choices, are creative and live constructively and may face difficulties, which we all know we may face difficulties. But again, you can see the similarities between this theory and or his what, where he started off with personality as Maslow. You can see the similarities. His contributions were person-centered therapy. It became very popular. Core concepts accepted by other orientations and emphasis on self-concept widely recognized. Again, he very much focused on his clients and where they were at and did not interject a lot. It was, very, it was a lot of self-reflection, active listening, um, empathy, um, and there was not a lot of feedback, not very direct. Criticisms is a lack of clarification of mechanisms and criticized for influences outside of person's perspective. So these are these two theorists, again, um, very well known in the world of psychology and theory. Um, again, take what you can from these. I'm not saying either any one theory is really accurate or correct. It's all really based on your own opinions, but hopefully this is helpful. It gets you a little bit more information about them. Um, it's very interesting. So anyways, I hope you guys have a great week. If you have any questions or need any clarification or anything, we are moving beyond halfway now. We have three more weeks to go. So hang in there. I know it's a fast ride, um, but please contact me if you have any concerns. Uh, have a great week. Thank you.